a passionate instigator and dynamic problem solver. Dr. Kevin Ross Emery, the host of the Dr. Kevin Radio Show, will be taking you outside the box, behind the curtain, and identifying the load of BS we are fed every day. And now, Dr. Kevin. Hello, greetings, salutations, and welcome to the first Dr. Kevin show of the month of May. When we have a first show of the month, we have a first show of the month co-host, none other than Matt Connerton from Matt Connerton Unleashed, where we kick around and uh, even sometimes put a spiritual twist on what's going on in the world today. You can hear more from Matt Monday through Friday at his drive time show from 4 to 6 on WNH, WMNH 95.3. Or you can go to mattconnerton.com and get to it from there. He also has a live call-in show, as this is a live call-in show. And you can call in at 202-570-7057. Again, that's 202-570-7057. Matthew, how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, How are you doing? Well, I'm loving spring. Uh huh. Nice weather. Getting out. Zoke, I don't know if you know, building supplies have gone through the roof. I did not know that. Yeah, well, you know, because we've been getting a lot of work done on the house and We've been doing it for like a year and a half, a little project, because, you know, my house was built in 1900. And though it's got that great 1900 built so much better than any piece of crap that gets built today, and (laughs) hardwood floors and mantles and all of that stuff. But, you know, after 120 years, we all need a little makeover pick-me-up. And... uh, Recently, the guy that's doing all the work for me, he's like, the price of lumber has like quadrupled. Um, It's hard to find it. It's hard to find good stuff. He'll go to one of the major box chain stores and they'll say online that they've got 47 two by, you know, pieces of wood, two by fours or whatever that he needs. And I'll get there and there'll be six and they're all like bent up and naughty and not really usable. Huh. And, uh, yeah, so I guess the lumber mills shut down for part of the pandemic. Yeah. People being at home got all like, hey, what can I do around the house? And uh, when they opened up, they haven't been able to catch up to the demand. So boards that were $2 a board are now like $11 a board. So if you can find them. Right, right. So, yeah. But anyway, so we're kind of dealing with the, the one of the side effects, the high cost of the almost post-pandemic America. Uh, right. <laughs> and there are a lot of increased costs because of this. I don't mm-hmm. know. I mean, you're not familiar with the home market one, obviously, because you're not building a new deck on your apartment in Manchester, I'm sure. Uh, Thank goodness, no. <laughs> yeah. But have you noticed um, how other prices are cracking up there? Well, I mean, I have noticed just, uh, you know, from what I've read that, uh, you know, actually, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens when the uh, eviction moratoriums expire and how that affects the housing market. But um, but, uh, yeah, everything uh, everything has kind of uh, gone up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and there's been a few judges that have actually said that the CDC overstepped its boundary. They've already taken the moratorium off. There are Mm -hmm. certain states that are already letting people get evicted. So I believe that they have a commonality, but I cannot speak completely. But I think that the commonality may have to do with uh, a strong reddish tint in certain parts of their makeup. 
<laughs> so. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Uh huh. So. Well, what there what, what there should be, then, and what what there should have been from the beginning, is some sort of assistance for uh, for landlords uh, who who are unable to collect rent from their tenants because, you know. <laughs> I did, I, actually, though, as I've said from the beginning of this pandemic, no matter what aspect of it we're dealing with, there are no good solutions. There are only the least bad solutions in this uh, in this uh, truly uh, extraordinary set of circumstances that we've been in for the past year now. So I don't know. Yeah, over <laughs> a year, over yeah. a year. So what's been the, so I've got a couple of topics I want to throw in at some point, but I want to ask you, first of all, what mm-hmm. have been the hot topics on Unleashed? Well, the biggest thing, as always, is the continuing pandemic. And, you know, we've been talking a lot about um, herd immunity and are we going to get to herd immunity? Uh, I I personally, not to be negative and pessimistic, but I believe it is not going to happen uh, because if there's something that we've learned about America from this pandemic is that there are far more tinfoil hat wearing right wing conspiracy theorists than I ever would have imagined. And of course, part of of, uh, that ideology, of course, is an anti-vax mentality. So, um, so we're not going to get to herd immunity, I don't think. But that's that's been a big part of the discussion. You know, um, I'm I'm very glad that uh, you know I'm glad that everyone who wants to get vaccinated can, or at the very least is able to at this point schedule an appointment uh, here in New Hampshire. As you know, Kevin, we've done just phenomenally with uh, getting people vaccinated. Uh, the uh, the Rite Aid that is close to where I live right here in Manchester, you can just walk in and if someone doesn't have an appointment at that particular moment that you walk in, they can take you and vaccinate you right on the spot. So so that's good, but the, the, the downside is vaccine hesitancy has certainly outpaced um, you know, basically it's flipped, right? You know, before it was uh, too much demand, not enough supply, and now that's been completely inverted. And we got to that point much sooner than I would have expected. So now there's too much supply and not enough demand. But that's been a big topic uh, on the show. Um, you know, that and things like, you know, Trump continues to be the most powerful person in the Republican Party. They're actually going to be removing Liz Cheney from her leadership position and replacing her with Elise Stefanik because Liz Cheney refuses to go along with the big lie uh, because the Republican Party is truly a cult of personality. And it it continues to revolve around Donald Trump, the guy who couldn't win re-election. Just remarkable. So that's also been a big topic on the show. I'd say those have been the two, two biggest so I I don't know whether you ran across this this um, story or not, but there was a private school, and I'm trying mm-hmm. to think of where it was in Florida, act, be- yeah, well, because was, where else? Say, yeah, really. Yeah, well, they're, <laughs> they just signed the election laws and they the new election laws, and they have two lawsuits that got filed within ten minutes after they were signed off. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, the school that actually would fire teachers if they got vaccinated and students weren't uh, weren't allowed to wear masks. Yeah, private school. It's yeah. just yeah. It's just like how did we get so loony binned? How did we get well? So it is uh, it is Florida. <laughs> Well, apparently, too, they believe in in that school. They believe in this. uh, This is new to me, this concept of vaccine shedding, where if you've been vaccinated, you you somehow shed the vaccine as you go around interacting with people and the vaccine somehow gets on other people. Uh, But instead of those other people getting vaccinated from your shedding, they actually get covid um, it's, uh, it's a, a pretty, uh, fascinating theory. So, 
so and this is a this is a high end private school that's educating children with what 13th century 14th century spanish inquisition science sounds about right yeah <laughs> uh, I don't know. I agree with you about herd you herd immunity. I don't think that we're going to reach it. No. I do think that um but I do think that the flare-ups will be, end up getting more and more contained. And of course, as I have gotten crap for, but I will continue to say it cuz I don't really care you know i would Mm -hmm. i i I, you know if it would just go and kill the 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 anti-vaxxers we'd be all set i mean like where's the justice here let them all get covid let's put them all somewhere and let them all fight it off the island you know we can make a reality (laughs) show for it donald could be the host yes yes Find well, a nice little I, island somewhere, and that's right, Trump Island. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's not all doom and gloom, of course, because even if we don't get to herd immunity, what we will have is the next best thing. The next best thing being that all those of us who are actually intelligent enough to get vaccinated and who understand the importance of it, will do it, will continue to do that. And we may find ourselves, and I think we probably will find ourselves in a situation, one possible scenario that is bandied about is that COVID will be with us uh, for the long term, and we'll have to get vaccinated yearly, you know, like the flu shot. You can get it every year. And that may be where we end up. So, that is not ideal. Uh, herd immunity would be ideal. We need to, uh, or it would be preferable to eradicate COVID-19 uh, using vaccines, just like we did with polio. But um, I wonder if these anti-vaxxers think that was a mistake, by the way, eradicating polio. Maybe we should have just let polio run rampant and uh, everyone could be in wheelchairs or dead. But uh, but anyway, um, I mean, maybe they'd prefer that. I don't know. But But I think that that's where we're going to end up. So we won't get herd immunity, but we'll have the next best thing where at least the smart people can protect themselves and protect their loved ones. And the dumb people can continue to go around getting each other sick. And at least they'll just be getting each other sick. And, you know, it's unfortunate that we'll have to continue to get vaccinated on a yearly basis. But um, I'll take it. You know, it's it's better than better than nothing. And and at least we'll be uh, still containing the pandemic in some way. If, if, we're, if we're not going to be able to get rid of it because we can't get everybody participating, at least we can contain it. And and so it, it's it's still it's still uh, uh, a positive trend, just not ideal. Yeah, well, and I think that that's what we have to look at. It is you you do what you can. I mean, the great strength and at times the great weakness of this country is the diversity of thought and the jury rigging and gerrymandering of power. Um, and you know, we've been we've been setting this up for a couple of decades now that we were headed to this place of you know, not being able to, um, not be able to like coexist. I mean, and, and, and the, the, it falls squarely in the lap of all of the politicians because they all stoke these fires to stay in office. So, I mean, we are simply a product of the, our own Machiavellian government. Yeah, but they're but but they're also a product of us because we continue to accept this. You know, we could change it if we really wanted to, but so many people, and this is one of the reasons I'm an independent. I think, I mean, I certainly lean far more left than right, but I think ultimately just being completely adherent and obedient to to 
either of the two primary political ideologies or to any ideology is very dangerous because you become conditioned to accepting whatever whatever pile of S uh, the people who are in control of your particular ideology want to shovel your way. So we continue to accept that this is what the two-party system gives us. We could change it, but we don't. We accept it, and it, it perpetuates itself. So, you know, it, it's easy to blame the politicians, but we're the ones who vote for them, and, and they come from us. Every professional politician was at one time just a regular American who decided to run for office. So it's on, it's on all of us. Obviously, you haven't been up on the latest QAnon. Didn't you know all the Democrats <laughs> were created out of a Petri dish and they were grown as a, as, as, a, as a death fungus to destroy the great white way of America? God, keep up with the times, Matt. Well, I didn't uh, know that about the death fungus, although that would be a great name for a band. Um, so... Well, at least the kind of band I listen to. So some of these people like Liz, Liz Cheney, Mitt Romney, there are a few others that are, are out there that are still standing up and, and saying, like Liz has been saying, and I'm not a big Liz Cheney fan, but, you know, when you look at what to compare her to, she's a pretty shining star in her party, as far as I'm concerned. Agreed. <laughs> so... What do you, do you think, or let's imagine if she decided to, if, if these Republicans that are doing the Lincoln project, when they're not busy stealing money and like sexually abusing people, uh, but people like the Lincoln project (laughs) and the other anti-Trump Republicans which there is, there, there is a little core group there, and they have had, a, have had an exodus into the independent party. What do you think would happen if like Liz Cheney ran as an independent next time she was up for election? Oh. So we'll be right back here on the Dr. <laughs> Kevin Show while we're talking about the politics and the news stories of the day with Matt Connerton from Matt Connerton Unleashed. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4pm Pacific Time, 7pm Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. Join a virtual book club, set up group text chats, or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org.
Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show here on Ohm Time. This is the first Thursday of the month, which is the Thursday. We were calling it through the spiritual lens, and then I came up with a better name for it. Now I forgot it. God, it's tough getting old. <laughs> uh, but this is the first Thursday of the month, which means Matt Connerton from Matt Connerton Unleashed. Uh, who has a drive time show from 4 to 6, Monday through Friday at 95.3 WMNH, uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. Or you can tune in through mattconnerton.com, where he talks a lot of uh, politics and world events. And he comes on once a month to bring the world here. And sometimes we give it a little spiritual spin, and sometimes we just kind of kick around the world because I think it's important. I do not believe that. Being spiritual puts you above what's happening in the world. I think being a coward does. Um, so, that being said, this is a live call in show. You can call in at 202 570 7057. 202 570 7057. So, Matt, so I have a couple of thoughts behind the question, but I want to see what you think. What would happen if Liz Cheney and Mitt Romney decided to run as independents. Um, I, I it's it's possible. I don't think they'll do it. Um, you know, uh, uh, when we were talking with Chris during the debate, he pointed out that uh, during the uh, during the debate during the break, rather, uh, he pointed out that. Um, you know, uh, Liz Cheney is very conservative. Um, you know, she's not like, say, Justin Amash, for example, who left the Republican Party uh, to become an independent uh, or really a, a libertarian. But but he is a libertarian. So he kind of had somewhere to go, whereas Liz, or he's libertarian esque. I mean, he's kind of a, a conservative libertarian hybrid. But Liz Cheney is no libertarian. She is very conservative. And by the way, I would just add, I have uh, I've grown an enormous uh, respect for her, uh, even though she and I probably agree on very little because she is so conservative. Uh, but I, I very much respect. I mean, she is not blinked. Uh, she is not back down an inch on her stance of refusing to uh, participate in the big lie. Uh, that the election was stolen and and she has refused to show any deference to Trump and those who keep uh, uh, trying to pressure her into doing so. And and so I really have a lot of respect for her, um, you know, and now there uh, she's uh, going to be replaced in leadership by Elise Stefanik, who is not as conservative. Um, but, you know, she certainly will. Uh, display great fealty to Trump, which is the most important thing to the modern Republican Party. Uh, it, it really is incredible, and it really is truly a cult of personality. Um, it, it's it's still all about Trump. It's just amazing. We've never seen anything like it. Um, but uh, I don't think Liz Cheney would do that. I think she will continue to be a Republican. Uh, I think she is hoping that eventually the Republican Party will come around and, and not be such a cult and, and Trump will finally fade away. Um, I don't see much evidence of that, but I, I think that's how she looks at it. And I suspect that's how Mitt Romney looks at it as well. Um, and Adam Kinzinger, he's another one who, uh, Adam Kinzinger, you might remember, famously received uh, a couple of very angry letters from his family. That he, you know, that that he released publicly, telling him how disappointed they were in him for not supporting Trump. Um, so, but I, I don't think I don't think any of these folks are going anywhere. Um, it, it's very risky to leave the warmth and safety of a political party, even if it's one where you've publicly become a pariah, um, because. Uh, you know, independents generally don't don't succeed in politics. There are rare exceptions. And I was thinking earlier about uh, what year was it? I mean, it was well over a decade ago. But when uh, when the Tea Party movement uh, had risen up 
uh, amongst the Republicans. And Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, Senator Murkowski, was deemed uh, not uh, suitable by the Tea Party. And they actually primaried her and nominated someone else. And she was a sitting U.S. senator in Alaska. And so what she did is she then said, okay, fine, I'll run as an independent. And leaving the Republican Party to become an independent actually, it actually worked. And that she was able to win that election as an independent. Um, And then, of course, you know, once the election was over, she went right back to being a Republican because she never. But 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 her reason for leaving the party was purely practical. She just did that so she could be on the ballot. And I think everyone at the time understood that. Um, But it's a risky proposition with very little upside. I don't think Liz Cheney or Mitt Romney are going anywhere. And there's also been a lot of media reporting that that privately Republicans are telling Liz Cheney, you know, hey, we're really sorry that you have to be a sacrificial lamb here uh, because uh, we will privately agree with you. But publicly, we have to stick by Trump because Trump is our he's our savior. He's the messiah as far as the electorate is concerned, the Republican electorate. And so. You know, we dare not cross him, but uh, but privately they're telling her, hey, you know, sorry. <laughs> so I don't think she's going anywhere, and I don't think that Romney is either. But, you know, it, it's um, it's a tantalizing prospect to uh, to consider. I'd like to see it, but I don't think it'll happen. Well, the interesting thing enough is that – If these people want to put their money where their mouth is, and they are so committed to not support the corruption that's become the GOP, and they do have some kind of power or popularity in their state, if nothing else, if they ran, they might split enough of the vote that for at least one round, the Democrats would take the seat. Now, they're not going to keep the seat on the long term, probably, but it would be a way to help semi-nail the coffin if a larger majority showed up in Washington on the Democratic side to pass some of these bills about gerrymandering and the Voters' Rights Act and stuff like this, you know, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a strategy there of what's going on now. Of course, is Trump's accountant going to turn on him? What are they finding in all these documents? We oh, know yeah. that he is as corrupt as the day is long. We mm-hmm. still don't know before he could run for president again that he could not end up in jail. Right. Right. And so, I mean, there's still, I mean, they just raided Judy, uh, G, uh, Rudy Giuliani. Yeah. And, you know, odds are saying that he'll turn on Trump in a heartbeat if it's going to keep him out of spending the last decade of his life in jail. He's, Trump better he's start, uh, I was just going to say, Trump better start paying those legal bills. Because there's a story in the news today that Giuliani, that that Giuliani's uh, lawyers have approached uh, Trump's lawyers or or somebody uh, associated with Trump saying, hey, uh, Trump needs to pay Giuliani for some of the work that he did for Trump, because now Giuliani is having to pay all these legal bills because Giuliani is trying to stay out of prison. And so far, it appears that Trump isn't going to pay him because Trump doesn't pay anybody ever. And, you know, Giuliani wasn't able to help Trump overturn the election. And Trump, you know, probably figures Giuliani is one of those buy here, pay here lawyers where, you know, you only pay if if, if they win. So, uh, uh, you know, Giuliani may very well end up turning on Trump because Trump's not going to pay any of Giuliani's bills. Won't that be great? Yep. I mean, there's still enough time for them to eat themselves. Mhm. Uh, oh yeah. And I think that um you know, 
if we want to talk about best outcome, it's, you know, I would hate to see Giuliani get away with everything he did, but I would take that if Trump's going to end up behind bars in orange. And he's still, (laughs) and he's still espousing and stirring the shit pot that the election was stolen because he has to. And the Mm -hmm. Republicans are stuck with the lie, except for the handful that are like, yeah, no, that's not what happened. Um, And of course, you know, he didn't make it back on Facebook. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. So, um, you know, I still don't know that we're not going to end up with some version of a civil war out of this. Not like 1865, but Trump gets arrested and thrown in jail. These people, even the ones he screwed over after January 6th, because he screwed over some of his own uh, some of his own supporters. Um, are they are, are are is is he going to encourage another attempt at an insurrection? And there are people that will do it because they've drank the Kool-Aid that he was in, in fact the president. And so he you can't put him in jail because he has presidential immunity because he was elected because it was a big, you know, because, <laughs> uh, you know. So, yeah, it, it's scary times. I don't think the scary, I don't think the scary times are over by a long shot. Um, yeah, with all of this this stuff unfolding. So there's a lot of talk that a possibility with, uh, what do you think about the electoral college and the shifting of the votes in New York, losing it by 89, 89 votes. They've gotten I mean, 89 census count. If they had gotten 90 more people to register in the census, they would have kept that seat. How, how much do you think, this is going to affect everything, this changeover of the number of House of Reps. Oh, yeah. Uh, Well, I mean, it's a pretty tight margin now for the Democrats. I think they only hold the House by five. Um, And they're going to probably lose seats in the midterm elections because historically, with only three exceptions that I know of, um, the uh, whichever party does not hold the White House usually gains seats in the House. So the Republicans are most likely to gain some seats in the midterm elections because we have a Democrat for president. Um, the only exceptions I know of offhand are 2002, I think 2000, uh, maybe, well, maybe 2010 um, or two, 2014. And I think sometime in the 1930s, um, so h- history tells us, uh, you know, for the Democrats, every every seat is uh, crucial right now, you know, and the Senate, you know, the majority in the Senate is barely a majority when it's really 50 50. You've got a Democratic vice president who can break a tie, but you've also got Joe Manchin of West Virginia, who's by far the most conservative Democrat in the Senate and who. It seems uh, at times hell bent on sabotaging anything the Democrats try to do. So, um, yeah, the, the the consequences could be dire uh, for the Democrats. Now, is it just a bunch of uh, what's the term I want to use? Is it a bunch of just the the liberal side of the press telling the liberals that what they want to hear or is the stuff that Biden is actually getting through as popular as they're making it out to be in both Democrats and Republicans, the extra checks, the aids, these, these projects, will that make a difference? If, if they're sitting there saying we like what's being passed, why would they vote against it? I mean, th- th- there's more benefit that's been happening to the American people in the last year than happened mm-hmm. to the American people f- 
for the four years before that for the average citizen. Mm -hmm. So you mean, you mean why, why would Republicans pick up seats? Yeah. Well, uh, maybe they won't. I mean, that's, that's the thing that there are exceptions. It, it doesn't always go that the, that the minority party gains seats in the midterms, just more often than not, far more often than not. Um, but you're right. I mean, Americans seem what, what, what's interesting is as, as far as what Biden is doing and what the Democrats are doing, you know, government is taking a much larger role than it has in recent years with all of this. But there's polling data that shows that a majority of Americans think that government needs to be doing more to help people rather than less. So in the past, there have been polls that have shown, uh, you know, at other points in recent history that that people thought government was too intrusive and should be doing less or people were more concerned about the budget and the debt and deficits and so forth. But recent polling data shows that people actually want government doing more, which I suspect stems partly from Trump's dereliction of duty uh, when it comes to the pandemic and also, you know, Biden coming in and saying, look, we can get millions of people vaccinated. We can we can vaccinate three million people a day. You know, I, I think people are feeling more positively about what government can do. So if that holds up, then maybe Republicans won't pick up seats uh, in the midterms. But history tells us they will just because that tends to be what happens. Um, it's a natural reaction, a natural backlash to, to whomever is president. Um, but we'll see. Maybe this will be an exception. Uh, but whatever Biden gets done, he knows he's only got two years to do it because assuming that history continues the way it has, um, you know, once those midterm elections happen, he's, he, you know, his presidency, I'm not saying his presidency is over at that point, but, but uh, he has an ambitious policy agenda and, and he has to get it done now. And I think that's why he's being so aggressive about it. And if, if it continues to be popular with Americans, who knows, maybe the Democrats will be fortunate uh, during the midterms. So one of the exceptions that you noted that stood out in my mind was the 30s. Mm. And I hear the music and I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to I'm going to connect the dots when we get back here on the Dr. Kevin show as to why I think we might find this upcoming set of elections to be an exception right here on the Dr. Kevin show. The Real Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Vox Novus, the new voice. Vox Novus, the new dimension. Vox Novus, thought and movement leaders who will share from their experience and offer tools to help us navigate our rapidly changing world. My name is Victor Furman. Join me every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio for Vox Novus, the new voice. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the last uh, segment 
of the first Thursday of the month of May here on the Dr. Kevin Show, where I'm here with Matt Connerton from Matt Connerton Unleashed. You can follow Matt at mattconnerton.com. Also at mattconnerton.com, you can watch his drive time show from 4 to 6, Monday through Friday at 95.3 WMNH, Manchester, New Hampshire, where he discusses politics, world events, and whatever other crazy things come across his mic. And I have been on that mic, and there's some crazy stuff that has come across it. (laughs) So I haven't been on that mic for a long time now. Well, you're always welcome, Dr. Kevin, especially now that uh, I assume you're fully vaccinated. Uh, I, I get my other vaccine in about a week and a half. I've got the first one. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm still well, waiting for the second one to come. Well, so, regardless, you are, you are always welcome. Yes, I know. And I appreciate that. I just wish my schedule would allow me to make the big trip from where I live to where you live. Cause I don't have <laughs> enough time to drive there, be on there and get back. That isn't booked. Um, yeah. Well, that's a, that's a good problem to have. Yes. Yes. I'm not quite where I was before uh, at the pandemic height when I was just so crazy busy that I didn't know what my name was, but (laughs) I'm still pretty, pretty busy. So um, so that's good. Uh, Yeah. So, uh, well, you know, I want to talk about the whole 1930s thing, because as soon as you said the 1930s, I'm like, well, that makes sense to me. And Mm -hmm. the reason it makes sense to me is that it was probably the first and perhaps the first and second, but probably the first real, the first um, after FDR became president and started doing all of these things to haul the country out of the depression Mm -hmm. and government stepped in and started generating jobs and generating, you know, the social service net, which the Republicans have been trying to take apart for the, ever since Reagan. And now we hit a time where through the pandemic, we had, you know, a need that, and I'm not going to say paralleled the great depression, but certainly gave it a run for its money for a lot of people. Yes. And and so with Biden getting these programs, I mean, I would love to see him get the infrastructure bill through, because if he can get that through and I know it's uh, there's there's parts and there's a long shot. But if he could get it through and suddenly all those jobs started struggling through the, the economy, it would be the perfect storm for, again, that exception. Of you don't bite the hand that's in the, pro- in, the in the process of feeding you. When the person who's running, when they're asked, well, would you have voted for the infrastructure bill? Uh, no, I wouldn't have, blah, 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 because it's a democratic socialistic thing. And everybody's sitting there going, OK, well, 50 of the people in the room wouldn't have jobs right now if you'd voted. No, yeah, I think I'll I think I'll I think I'll keep on. I'll hold on to my Democrat for another two years. I can yeah. I can get all uh, I can get all holier than now when I haven't lost my house and there's regular food on my table and my job is secure again, then I can become all holier than thou. But right now, I think I'll take the handout. Thank you very much, socialism. Not that it is socialism, but socialism's working for me. Go away. Uh, right. So that was like the possible. I made in my, made yeah. in my mind. It's possible. And Lord knows Joe Biden wants to be FDR. I mean, it, he, he kind of uh, he campaigned like he didn't particularly want to be. Um, but he but that that's what he's going for, you know, and and uh, we'll see. I mean, I'm skeptical about about the infrastructure bill. Uh, I think we need it. It's hard to argue against infrastructure. We have crumbling roads and bridges and God knows we don't want to, what happened in Mexico with that uh, that subway that, that collapsed. You know, we don't want uh, anything like that happening here. But, uh, you know, just driving around New Hampshire, you can see there's some roads that really need uh, need some fixing. Well, and he keeps on saying he can pay for it with all of these taxes and Mm -hmm. the economy needs the jobs and the work needs to get done. I just love the fact that Mitch McConnell, who has been 
yelling and screaming about this horrible bridge between Kentucky and I can't even remember what the other state is, Missouri, I think, that would get fixed if the infrastructure bill would pass. And of course, he's voting against it because, you know, I think it was, was it Biden that said it's no longer the Republican Party. It's just the anti-democratic party. <laughs> Did he say that? I missed that. No, he's right. Yeah. Yeah. He's right. You know, there is no, there are no Republican values left being espoused in the Republican Party right now. Um, They're all just anti-democratic. Whatever they say, we're just going to be anti. Okay. Yeah, well. Go ahead. I was just, just going to add, and ultimately, to whatever Trump says. Mm. Yeah. Did you happen to catch a glimpse of the last Lincoln Project ad that they put on in the local Fox network that he watches in Florida before he moved up <laughs> to his New Jersey home? Did no, I didn't it? see it. I didn't see it, no. I watched it. It basically makes it sound like um, that uh, Mitch McConnell is really the mastermind and he's just using Trump and once and and Trump is just such a dupe that McConnell's going to use him and he's really the power behind the Republican Party and once once midterms are done and and Trump has made sure that the Republicans have taken taken back the the house and the senate hopefully that uh you know he'll 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 then be done with Trump and he'll get rid of him before the next election now we know that's not really going to happen but you know it drove Trump. I mean, he was probably chewing on furniture and clawing at wallpaper when he watched it. Because you had this like maniacal looking, smiling Mitch McConnell and, and, yeah. and the whole thing was, was about how Trump was really Mitch's Mitch's puppet and, and Trump wasn't smart enough to realize it. Uh, well, there there could be something to that, actually, in that if McConnell – that might be how McConnell hopes it plays out. In other words, it, McConnell might be hoping that Trump will help with the midterms, and then after that, maybe Trump will fade away or end up in jail or something, because I'm sure McConnell would love to be rid of Trump once and for all, but not until Trump has fulfilled his final purpose to McConnell, which will be to help with the midterms. Now, did so you... Might, go ahead. Might be something. Well, I was just going to say, so there might be something to that. Oh, uh, well, I'm sure that this is what Mitch McConnell dreams of. <laughs> I mean, the, yeah. the, you know, uh, you know, becoming the, the, you know, majority leader of the Senate again and Trump safely behind bars where he can just turn around and basically be his true hypocritical self and distance himself like he never supported Trump, anything Trump did. And it's such a pity, but he's going to have yeah. to be careful because even if Trump's behind bars, the Trump supporters, and of course, you know, Trump's going after McConnell. And after that ad was released, he's really started making more that, that McConnell needs to be taken down. McConnell yeah. needs to be, he needs to lose his position of power in the Republican Party. He needs to go away. And, and this this whole ad, I'm sure, fueled all of Trump's paranoia around McConnell. Oh, McConnell yeah. and Pence. Yep. They didn't do enough, he says, <laughs> to prove that his election was stolen. And, of course, Pence is starting to do his early foray into seeing if he can make a run for president. And Trump just yeah. stomping right on that. Yeah, Pence is coming here. He's coming to New Hampshire. Uh, I forget when. But, uh, yeah, uh, Pence is starting to test the waters. I think he's wasting his time. I believe Mike Pence's political career is over. Republicans will never forgive him for uh, not, you know, somehow magically just deciding on January 6th that uh, Trump had won. So, uh, uh, Pence is Pence is done. I I don't know what his uh, I don't know if he's just not 
facing up to it or what. But, yeah, he's going to be coming to New Hampshire to try to drum up support. But uh, but the field is effectively frozen anyway until we know what Trump is going to do, because if Trump does stay out of jail and decides to run in 2024, he will be the nominee. So uh, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. It would be interesting to see on a debate stage uh, Trump and Pence as adversaries during the primary season for 2024. I don't think it'll happen. I don't think Pence will. I think Pence will figure out fairly early that he's not wanted. But we'll see. Well, that's if the GOP will let anybody from the GOP. Um debate trump they shut down right. they shut it down for the for they wouldn't they basically wouldn't let anybody take him on um you know they effectively closed it all down and if trump is going to run again i suspect they're going to do the same thing unless there's something that really shakes up his leader you know like shakes up his messiah role as you like to call it yeah um you know of course, who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe Liz Cheney should run for president. That would be a hell of a debate. <laughs> it would. It would. Well, Ron, Ron DeSantis, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida, is rumored uh, to also be interested. But part of what's made him so popular in Florida is is he's kind of like a mini Trump. But uh, you know, but he's not going to want to take on Trump. That, that's one thing I, I do appreciate about Trump is that he by not signaling what his final decision is going to be he's really kind of frozen the field and made everyone in the gop who wants to run for president have to be very nervous about how to navigate this you know tom cotton certainly wants to run that's no secret um mark marco rubio would like to run again ted cruz would like to run again you know but they're all kind of stuck because of Trump. And uh, oh, that's kind of fun. I can appreciate Trump for that. It's fun watching them all squirm and twist in the wind. Because usually by now, uh, as soon as one presidential election is over, we see candidates for the next presidential election begin to try to consolidate support and fundraise and you know, none of them can really do that. They have to kind of tiptoe around Trump to, to do the bare minimum. That's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. What are the what are the odds that you think that Biden will try to run again at his age? Just I'm just just conjecture at this point cuz if, if if I mean miracles of miracles if they can keep the House of Reps and and the Senate for two more years. So Biden has a full four years of bringing stuff in he might end up being a fairly popular president. Yeah, I'm really skeptical. I, you know, I, I I don't think he'll run for a second term. I think, uh, I know he says he will, but I think he has to say that. I think it'll be Kamala running uh, for the nomination in, uh, in 2024. I, I, I really do. I, you know, I think Biden has done a phenomenal job with the vaccine rollout. And so I give him an A plus on pandemic handling. There's some there's some other things. Um, there's some other things I don't give him high marks on that, you know, we don't have time to get into here, obviously, that I do talk about on my show. But the handling of the pandemic, I give him an A plus. But I think he's going to I think I think he'll be ready to ride off into the sunset at the end of uh at the end of this term, I I don't see him running again. Well, you know, if Kamala runs for president, I mean, there will be uh, there will, there will be a a distinct advantage because there'll be an immediate decrease of Republicans voting because they they'll they'll have all had heart attacks and dropped dead that she could <laughs> possibly be president because it will be so upsetting to them. Um, you know, they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll, you know, I guess it's one way to clear the field. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So anything else before we run out of time that's going on in the world that you think is of note that no one's paying attention to? Because we're all still getting caught up in Trump drama and all of those things. And there's still way too many times that man's name is getting mentioned. But Mm -hmm. do you think there's anything of importance that's going on that's not getting the the, the press or the uh, insights it should right now? You know what I talk about a lot on my show, actually, that doesn't get talked about enough is ending the drug war. And I'm very focused on it. Well, I've always been focused on it, but especially lately, because there's a lot of talk about criminal justice reform and police reform and all of that. If you end the drug war, a lot of these problems go away. You would uh, greatly decrease the amount of interactions that law enforcement has with American citizens. So everyone who's concerned about unarmed black Americans being killed by police should want to see the end of the drug war. And that doesn't get talked about nearly enough. Well, and and Como just saw something where felons on parole are gonna get more, the right to vote in New York. Yeah. And that, that could be a big deal. Yep. Um, okay, well, we're going to check in at the beginning of June and see how the world has shifted. Matt, thanks as always. And, uh, Thank you. Know, maybe, maybe May will be the time that I sneak into your studio. <laughs> <laughs>